what it is. How's it going, everybody? Today, we're going to be talking about The Witcher, season two, hitting the Netflix uh, internet webs or internet. You know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we're going to talk about all the stuff. We're going to talk about The Witchers, the magic, the mayhem, the monsters, all that good stuff. So if you want to hear what we have to say, tune on in and listen to The First Ones to Die. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to the first one to die. Are you starting a choir or something? I don't know. Okay. Very We're weird. recording I mean, later than normal in the evening. So things happen after 8 p.m. And y'all are just going to have to deal with it because it is a new year. This is our first episode of 2022. Welcome. How y'all doing? Technically, technically, no. This is our first episode that we're recording in 2022. How y'all okay, doing? That's, that's, that's that true. one's a fair. That one's a fair that's, comment. That one's more true. <laughs> that one's yeah. No, that one's correct. Uh, I'm doing good. I've been working. Got to actually restart my book that I've been wanting to write for a while. A little fantasy novel that I've been working on for like years and kind of been falling in and out of it and now I've actually created a structure for it so I'm really excited for that and I told you guys previously I downloaded the Sonic game Mega Sonic on my Switch which I have been playing non-stop anytime I'm just in my bed I'll play and I remember how addicted I was as a kid to that and then it just reminded me of like the Sega games with the cassettes and then mm -hmm. I felt old for a while and that, that's, that's been my month of January <laughs> feeling old because I keep playing old games that I used to play as a kid but they're just so much fun how about you guys Jerome what are you doing pay attention I'm currently <laughs> looking up Megasonic because I was like I want to see it because I've been actually charging Shit, up my Nintendo great. Switch Lite <laughs> so much fun um uh, but uh yeah I've been uh decorating the apartment getting that set, sorted up and then um been uh watching uh search party i binged the whole series of search party uh it's very funny um i never i haven't watched the dark comedy series in a minute so that was actually nice like change of pace also been, i've been watching a lot of series actually i've been keeping up with uh peacemaker I've been keeping up with the book of boba fett um which has been a slog in and of itself <laughs> um and then uh, also, of course, watching Euphoria, loving Euphoria season two so far. Can't wait to see how it ends. Um, so yeah, been just like watching a lot of stuff. Oh, I've also watched um, What We Do in the Shadows. It's on Hulu. Like my sister reintroduced, I like seen it. Uh, my sister introduced me to it. It's a comedy show about like a docu, it's like a fake documentary series where they follow around vampires and I ended up mm -hmm. loving it. It's stupid. Don't get me wrong. It is a stupid show and it's just don't yeah, know why. Seen, yeah. Uh, have you seen the movie? Yeah. I recently just watched a movie. I mm -hmm. like the show so much better than the movie because the vampires are just dumber in the show, but I like, it's such a weirdly enjoyable show, but anyway, what about you, Jonathan? What are you doing or watching or what's going on with you? Yeah, so I told you guys both earlier today that a couple hours ago, I got my car back from the shop. Uh, my child is finally back in my arms. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy to for have those, For context, for those who are just tuning in for the first time, he means his dog. He's not talking about... <laughs> He's not talking about an actual child. Nobody on this podcast has children. Hey, I, that's my son there. Okay, real children, <laughs> not fur I, children. Those I said my car. Things. I said my car, not my dog. Are you referring yeah. to your car as your child? Yeah. yeah. In, in this context, your dog's feelings. You are. Dude, wait a minute. Do you not like refer that? to your car as your baby either, Jerome? Because I do. No. No, my car is like my vehicle. <laughs> my car is my baby. His name is Brad. Well, I don't have a name for my car, but <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, I'm happy, I'm happy to have it back in my possession. Um, 
also, uh, you know, just been doing the normal thing, working, um, and some of the things I've been watching. Also, Euphoria. I've been enjoying this season a lot. It's very intense. A um, lot of, lot of, also a lot of just, just male genitalia in Euphoria. Very this much. Season. Yeah, that's like, what people seriously, say a lot. Like, it, is, it has become like a problem. Every episode. <laughs> like every I, episode I, has I, at least had at least more than five shots of some dude's junk is it's really weird well that's that's a lot of people have been saying you know that's the uh, all bit it's it's a little excessive but it's the equality I mean, like people, euphoria has always had that equality though in the first season there's a whole uh rant in the beginning of one episode about like dick pics and, and the art of doing it and they are not shameful to not show you a bunch of pictures of a bunch of guys guys penises so they've always been equal opportunity but this year it's just like they were on a mission to, to, i have to yet to sure watch you see season two. more penises than you do boobs in this show i have yet to see season two of euphoria so ha- going into now this with that knowledge <laughs> i you're gonna have a counter now i just don't know like <laughs> <laughs> if I want to watch season two now, if I'm going to be hit with that, you're like, oh. I mean, as long as Sydney Sweeney stays on the cast, I guess they'll balance out because that <laughs> they, she is not ashamed to like uh, have a scene with her top off. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to feel about any of that. <laughs> and I think we should move on to the actual topic of this we'll, episode. We'll move on. Uh, anyway, yeah. on we got to a note. show that refuses to have any more nudity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Witcher season two on Netflix, starring Hen- Henry Cavill. Uh, season two was released in December, and I guess I'll go into the intro. Um, yes, well, uh, yeah, of the concept. <laughs> what, what is The Witcher? It's, the, uh, it's set in a fictional medieval inspired landmass known as the continent. It explores the legend of. And I'm not, I'm going to Geralt butcher of Rivia. These names. It's Geralt. All right. Geralt it's just of Geralt. Rivia. Yes. It's not Geralt. Geralt of Rivia. It's not Gerald. It's, it's Geralt. Garrett. The hard G. Geralt of Rivia uh, and Princess Siri, who are linked to each other by destiny. Stars Henry Cavill, Freya Allen, and Anya Chalor- Chalortra. Chalortra. I think it's Chalotra. Uh, Chalotra. I think it's like how it's pronounced is Chalotra. Or Chalotra. Really, really quick, Jerome, you know, when you do stuff like that about how things are pronounced, it makes me want to like say things incorrectly. The wrong way. But because I <laughs> yeah. really like this show, I don't want to pronounce their names incorrectly. So now I feel like I'm at an impasse of what, how I will pronounce people's names. Listen, to let you know, not- I know how to say other these characters' names because I do enjoy Do you? So if you hear me say something wrong, it's solely on the basis <laughs> just to annoy Jerome. <laughs> I don't think you do. I think you're just lying. You cover up. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> now, 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 nobody's gonna know. Now, nobody's gonna know. Um, nobody's gonna know. They're nobody's gonna, gonna know. know. Now, Jonathan, I know. like me. I know Alex has seen season one. Did you get a chance to see season one before you got? Into oh yeah, you had an two? explanation for us. So, I watched the 15 minute season one recap on YouTube, Netflix's YouTube. Or and ashamed. I am not, or no, ashamed. no, I am not ashamed at all because be. I yep. <laughs> have procrastinated watching this series so much because how I'm we not had, just and like, not only did it come out way and before, I knew you were going to say this too. I knew you were going to say this. <laughs> this is how, this is the predictability. <laughs> I knew Jerome was going to come at me with the, we had a month, we were off for a month. The reason I did not, the reason I procrastinated watching this show is because one, over winter and over like our break period, there were things that I was more interested in watching. And if I had the opportunity to delay watching this as long as I could, then I would do that. And so I did that. And I am just not, I am, how do I say this? I am not a fantasy person. Um, famously a lot of the fantasy titles even the popular ones I have not uh, seen if I have seen them I haven't enjoyed them as much as everyone else 
So. <laughs> yeah, I've actually noticed that about you. Because during yeah. like Christmas time when I was trying to pick out, uh, I was looking for like a book to gift you. Uh, I was like, I saw all these interesting books and I was like, wait, no, he doesn't like fantasy. He's never talked to me about a fantasy book. I'm like, I don't think, I actually came to that realization in December. I don't think he likes fantasy. It's just okay. not my genre, books or or movies or TV. Um, that being said, this this held my interest enough, but I feel like if I actually enjoyed the fantasy genre as a whole i would have enjoyed it a lot more hey, let me ask you this question this is for you and alex um were you lost at any point during the show um and the reason i asked that's because the complaint that i've been seeing coming out of this season compared to season one is how much more because uh for those who don't know the witcher um while there is a video game version of the witcher um the show is more based off the original books and so there's a lot of lore a lot of backstory a lot of characters that come in and out um and because they got a season two they were like all right well now we know people like the show we're just gonna go all in and just have like a bunch of characters and and things and references to the overarching like world that even some of it we've seen and some of it we have not seen yet um and so uh, the complaint I've been seeing uh, from uh, a few people watching the season is they're like, we like it, but it's a bit dense with lore information. And I, and I got lost a couple of times because I didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah, they do do that. They put in like some of the lore of like the lore of the land where it gets a little bit heavy and they'll, they'll just have these discussions and they're like, oh yeah, you know, the, like the Deathless Mother, one of the first things the witchers have ever fought and be like, no, I didn't. I didn't know that. No, I don't know why it's so serious to you guys. <laughs> that really intense without the backstory. Um, I think there were parts where it could have had like at least a flashback of like the myth story they were trying to per portray, especially like the elven part where, spoiler, there's a part where a full blown elf is born and it's like a big deal. But as a viewer, I didn't know it was that big of a deal. Because in season one, there were elves or people, characters that were portrayed as elves. And I was not aware that they were only like half elf or part elf. So yeah, that part I was like a little like confused at when they made it such a big deal. Well, they, they said it in the season where they were like the first elf born baby that's like natural birth is what they is. Uh, they made that a big deal. Yeah, I did. I guess I just like didn't hear that part or like. It didn't stay in my mind. I was just confused to like, well, there were out. There's already elves around. I um, I was uh, at times. Yes, um, I feel like overall the story. Uh, there was the overarching story, but then the individual like relationships and where people belong. Um, that's what gets me sometimes. Uh like knowing which people belong to which groups that sometimes gets me. Mm -hmm. um, but I also did my post show, uh, a little bit of post show research in um, diving into that a little bit to try to be a little bit more prepared. Yeah, I, I wasn't lost, but I think it's just because I'm so used to like D and D where a lot of there's there's so much going on Nerd. in D, D. so you kind of just like <laughs> accept whatever you can say what you want you're the one who keeps asking <laughs> to play it all right look the point is <laughs> i told lord i'm like i do want to play it but every time i bring it up to you i can't help but like tease you a bit and then it's like well i'm not getting anywhere <laughs> with this probably not gonna play it and if i do play it i'd probably be such a mean person um but go on sorry go but um it. but it it is like but because i'm used to playing D, &D the, a lot of D, D um is just like accepting things and just being like oh that's the backs like oh you've not heard of this thing you've not heard of uh you know lancela the witch from whatever whatever and you're like no and like, well, let me tell you, it's actually the, and you're like, all right, I guess this is a character now that exists. I, I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know that, but I guess I'm going to roll with it. And that's, 
a lot of D&D. So I was, I kind of took it that way where they they would mention things that I'm like, I've never heard of that. But if you're saying you're with the confidence you're saying it with, I'm just going to assume it's something we should be concerned about and keep it rolling. Because if I harped on every single small detail about something that happened that one time, I'd, I'd be lost. Now, granted, the one that I, I uh, was uh, talking to Al about this, because Al's a huge Witcher fan. And, uh, and so is his, uh, and so is Chandra too. But um, there, uh, there's one point where uh, they talk about the wild hunt and uh, anybody who's played the Witcher three, the wild hunt knows what that is. And I've played that game. So when they mentioned the wild hunt, I was like, Captain America in that meme where I was like, I got that reference. I know that one, that one. <laughs> I got it. No information needed. Got it. <laughs> I love those moments when you have where you're just like, oh, I know what they, I know what's going on. I'm super aware. And just like, even though it's, it's it could be a smaller detail or something or something bigger. Like I, I recall the wild hunt is a very big deal. It's just, I love those moments where you're like, yes, I'm so aware and I'm so in touch with this show now. <laughs> even though that um, was in the last episode. Uh, well, they mentioned, they, oh. yeah, because they, they mentioned it, I think even in the first, season but like in passing it wasn't like an important thing they were just like the wild hunt's coming and i was like oh hey wild hunt reference <laughs> but it was like not important um yeah i guess we kind of oh, went by, through by our, the way our, our individual uh, thoughts yeah, general are, thoughts. are you gonna set up are you gonna set up the point? i was just about to say i was like maybe we should clarify to people we are gonna spoil this show so oh, yeah. <laughs> but to be fair it came out in december all the episodes are out so uh, if you it. haven't seen it already, uh, pause this. Go watch the rest of the season if you haven't Don't finished forget to come it back. if you haven't started it. Uh, and then come on back and listen to our thoughts on the spoiler stuff. But we're about to go into spoilers, talking about the whole show in detail. Uh, I'll start, I guess. And uh, I, I actually really enjoyed this season. Um, although my only criticism of this season is normally when you watch a tv show there is like a this is what this season's about like like the first season is all about Geralt um yeah well it really is like a series of short stories but it's mostly Geralt like he meets Yennefer he falls in love with her he's trying to like you know make that relationship work and in the meantime Ciri who more or less is the main character of the Witcher stories is like trying to escape um uh what is it um Milfgard, like Milfgard. Uh, uh huh. I was gonna the, say Milfgard, but that the, was wrong. <laughs> the one that's so wrong. The one that the black lady belongs to. Yeah, Nilfgaard. Uh, and she's trying to escape them and and find uh safety. And so at the end of season one, she finds Geralt. The end. You know, this season, I have no clue what this season is supposed to be about because it's just a series of stories it feels like it feels kind of like they're they are setting up something but they haven't quite set it up yet so this is kind of that middle chapter to set up a lot of things before they get into the next chapter um so there were a couple times where i was just like i'm sorry what's the plot <laughs> of this season um well but that being said though i like the moments in it I love, I love wasn't that. the overarching thought sorry to cut into your um no 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 take it go okay. ahead um okay and I, i'll go so I'll, I'll lead into my thoughts but isn't it kind of like the overarching uh plot is like save the girl did you just I mean, do a heroes reference Oh, that I got. I'm like, where did the girls say the world? Yeah, that's that's yeah, because you said it with like your your um, I thought you were doing Forrest Whitaker there from Rogue One to save the dream. (laughs) Save the there's a lot of ways I could go. Uh, kind of, kind of, it's more about protecting her and like having her fulfill her destiny. I didn't like how Suri, Suri was so much in this season. Because she was kind of a brat a, a good part of times. And it was like, I understand she was getting frustrated with because Geralt was uh, keeping her training a little lower and like going a little slower. But at the same time, 
because he, he wasn't taking the Witcher route, which, you know, they mutated them. They poisoned them, basically went through the trials to become the Witchers. I was getting a little annoyed with her. It's like, dude, like, calm down. Listen to these people with a giant sword who are trying to help you out. And I get you want to go further, but at the same time, you know, you have this magic you can't control. You are not strong enough yet. You're they're trying to help you build your strength. And she's just complaining about how she could be better, she could do better, she's more. And it's like, no, right now you're like, you aren't good enough. All right. You've been hiding, you haven't been training. All you've been doing is technically running away. And now you're trying to jump into like, oh, I can fight, I can do everything you're doing. Absolutely not. And she kind of got a bratty attitude a couple of seasons. And I understand like her wanting to go further. But I feel like at points they were just making her too bratty, and I just did not like it. Uh, I yeah, I think they were trying to, because um, especially Henry Cavill, he pushed for a lot of stuff to be just like the book, and so Siri in the book is that way. Um, even that she's very gun ho, she's very like, I want to fight. I I get the gun ho, but gun. Uh, maybe it's just because I guess I was the character. Like her performance. Just came yeah, her performance came off more bratty than gung ho. It didn't feel or maybe like... it wasn't written that way, but the act the actor played it that way. Could absolutely, and that's it could be just one way I portrayed it. Um mm-hmm. I do know that in the with Yennefer in the book, she's apparently really useless and kind of horrible. Uh yeah, because I was watching this one uh TikTok review who she 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 reads the books it's very informative i really like her i've watched a couple of her tiktoks where she talks about the reader she's like jennifer do, jennifer does nothing in the books in the first book she does nothing she's there to just be there because they're setting up for the rest of the books and i felt a little bit like that in in the first season she was kind of like that you can tell it was setting up for more it wasn't until the half of the season where you got to see more of her power and her battling that it was actually really good and uh, you could actually see the strength she has. And then at the beginning of this, when she loses her chaos magic, it was a little more like, okay, so we're setting up for something more. She's trying to, and it was that leading to meeting Yaskier. By the way, Yaskier, my absolutely favorite character ever. And I was so annoyed that they didn't introduce him again until the fourth episode. I wish they had brought him back earlier. Yaskier is like I think they used him enough because Yaskier in here no, is not fuck like you. I asked Chandra about Yaskier in the books. He is a completely different character. So here it's like I like Yaskier, but they're like, for example, I thought it was like I get his character, but I'm like, dude, now you're trying to I accomplish think- a mission. Lives are on the line. And you're going to risk the lives of elf people because of your own pride, because some dude doesn't quite get your art. Are you kidding me? You're going to get people killed. And he does. He gets one of the elf dudes killed. I can see that. I think that he's one of the most realistic characters, of course. Have you, like, I, and I say this as a person who isn't, who does artistic stuff too. There is a pride that comes with being artistic. You do, you would be like. There dead is, but not, it, and that like, doesn't you supersede would, your de- your duty to other people when you're trying to help someone out. No, but it's that pride within us as artists and like, you know, people who create stuff. I, Yaskier is still my favorite character and I don't think they used him well enough or utilize his character because on his own, he was able to be, can't become the sandpiper. The moment he's with uh, Geralt again, he's just a comedy relief. And it was like, oh, that's bullshit. He's so much yeah, better than he's that. He's not capable. <laughs> he <laughs> is capable. Him, he's capable. He was doing all he this could other help shit. Organize stuff. And even then, it's not like he was succeeding well, clearly, that much. They were still killing a lot of elves like every day. He only well, got like yeah. the few he could get every yeah, now and that again. Wasn't, yeah, he was doing the best he could in this situation. That's but what I'm girl, saying. Well, like, he, you know what? He, honestly, he, had he could accomplish things, but he's not. Gas you know. gear, probably. Geralt and the Witchers would have probably have been more organized. They clearly yeah. were not doing very well. Okay, I'll ask. I'll ask you guys this. Um, and this kind of like translate into some of my thoughts um since the first episode and it just continued throughout the rest of the series I was like oh this show reminds me of a movie and then I was like oh this show reminds me of an of another movie and then I'm like oh this reminds me of a show this show okay so I'll, I'll kind of like 
break them down a little bit. And I was, I just kept doing this. I couldn't help myself from doing this, but okay. We have Lord of the Rings, obvious references because you know, the elves and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, Stranger Things slash it. What? In the very- <laughs> Now you've lost yeah, it. When the, gonna... when the, when the, ver, what's it called? the Verena, is that, is that, is that the name of the, um, the, the oh, girl that gets her head chopped? don't ask monster names because I'm, I don't okay. them. <laughs> the girl that gets her head chopped off by, by Henry Cavill. Okay. Um, when she opens her mouth, it reminded, it gave me very much that Stranger Things and It with all the teeth. Um, we also have uh, Game of Thrones with the different, especially the flying yeah. monsters that look like dragons. Um, that I'm that got me right? there. Really? Uh, what was that? I'm trying to remember their name. They're like Warrens um, or Ryan's. No, something like that. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think they're Rivens. Rivens are like more like dragons. I mean, maybe maybe this is their this universe's version of Rivens. I think it's a reference. That's what I'll say. Go on. Sorry. Uh, we have the conjuring slash exorcist with some of the possessions and stuff going on. Um, we also have, lastly, uh, that's so raven. Um, and I just kept, I just kept calling in my mind. I kept calling uh, Siri that's so raven because you know she can see the future and stuff. So she did um, have moments where she would just pause and stare off into space. So I will give you that. There's there were moments that occurred like that. Uh, I can see your ties. Those oh, tie and we, too. and we also have Harry Potter with the owl. Okay, that's just an owl. <laughs> At that point, every movie that I has mean, an no, owl in it no, reminds you magic. of Harry Potter. No, no, there's right. magic. So right. Harry I mean, Potter. it may be a magic owl, but the thing is, the owls in Harry Potter don't turn into people. <laughs> They're just owls. No, they but deliver they, letters. But they can though, because they uh, do the transformation in uh, Harry Potter. No, I haven't Mag seen Mag the movie still. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole class and them turning into animals there there's a scene from harry potter <laughs> the teacher transforms from like a cat and cat to a person yeah, yeah see know, there you go you know that's that's different than like yeah but the other owls don't turn into people <laughs> those are just owls yeah but they an owl could turn into a person anyway uh i can see your point of references with those movies yeah and how they connect that it one kind of threw me off, but I, 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 I can't. That's I'm, very much a reach because no, like, it just point, reminded no, no, me of the, it's the, of mouth, the sewer. It's the when mouth, you open no, 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 I know exactly what you're saying. I'm just saying like, <laughs> like that was a bit of a reach. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's fantasy. There's no, no fantasy thing. After Lord of the Rings was created, after that, every fantasy thing is just following Lord of the Rings for the most part. Um, with, with like, varying degrees of rules like you know because like magic in the lord of the rings world is very rare uh as far as like who can wield it and use it versus in the witcher like a lot of people can use it it's just you know probably gonna mess you up if you do it wrong <laughs> and certain magics are outlawed like fire magic yeah um i get a little always a little confused when they call it chaos magic or they call it the chaos she lost yeah. the chaos and i was like but it's not really chaos i mean you you're it's still a, a great amount of control why don't you just call it magic or something or why do you keep calling it chaos because that's this world's version of magic i guess the best way like for a way for them to describe it without saying magic but yeah it was that was like i'm like just call it magic why is everything I mean, all this magic have Maybe, maybe, maybe because maybe to separate it and give it and like villainize it a little bit. I, I mean, think chaos is a good thing. I find chaos fun. No, <laughs> chaos is not fun depending on who, which side of that chaos you're on. And also, are you talking about chaos magic chaos or is. just chaos? I think chaos, chaos in general. <laughs> I think chaos is fun and interesting and surprising. And you know, just go along with the ride, see what happens. Uh, chaos is something of uncontrolled. The whole world is chaos. You gotta enjoy the world. Um, I mean, the only thing it kept making me think of is like in uh, uh, the book Doomsday Clock from DC Comics, they um, Doctor Manhattan 
undoes like magic users from the DC universe stuff like or uh, or undoes their magic like John Constantine is a tan and stuff and they explain magic in a way that I'm like that'd be neat a neat idea in that like magic is you know the, like the big bang happened and created the universe magic is the runoff leftover energy that has nowhere to go and people manipulating it like that's how they've explained it in the DC universe of like how magic works and why it works um so it's like in that regard calling it chaos is kind of cool but i don't know if that's how magic works in the witcher i don't think that's where that comes from i don't know how they they just kind of describe they're like oh it's in you you just have it or you don't which Uh, what go ahead no you go ahead oh no i was just gonna say i i feel like and i think we've talked about we've talked about that on the podcast with some of these movies where it's just like yeah, it's, this is just the world and this is how it is. It's, it just happens <laughs> like that. It's just all of a sudden with old, yeah, this is just the, all of a sudden, yeah, we don't know how it got here. This island got here, this or this beach got here, but I mean, it that's did. the core of all fantasy and sci-fi is that some, the things aren't to be explained. Some things aren't to be explained. Some things just are. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they do. Uh, in, uh, Bone, in Bones and Shadows. Yeah, Shadow and Bones. Oh, Shadow and Bones. Shadow and Bones on Netflix. There's like this part. Which they're doing like, season two right now. They're filming. Season yeah, I'm excited right for it. Um, there's this uh, what they call the veil. It's called the veil, or have, do I call it the veil? <laughs> I think I call it the veil. It's the part where they're like, there's a big <laughs> space that's separating the continent in you know that dark shadow realm, and they openly say we don't know how it got there. One day it popped up and it's there, and it's monsters in there. We leave it be. And I like that explanation, though. Like, other people are like, it's always been there. It's part of the world. Blah, blah, blah. They're like, we don't know what the fuck that is. It came out of nowhere one day. People tried to cross it. People died. So we just leave it alone. And I've always enjoyed that part of uh, Shadow and Bones where they're just like, we don't know. And I think I would have pref- I would love that, like, if other books or movies or shows touch on that. Or, like, they openly admit, oh, it's not Legend of We don't know what happened. It's just there. We live with it, but like, we don't know. Not like that. acting like it's normal yeah, and part of everyday like, oh, life. This is like, all oh, no, like we don't know. I don't know. The same with like magic in this world. Um, when, when I see like people talk about it, they're like, oh, it's like from the earth or like, oh, it's ancestral or blah, blah, blah. Be like, you don't know. Nobody knows ancestral stuff anymore. Records are gone. Things are lost. I'm like, maybe <laughs> Not it's in the, the witcher earth. world. Not in the we witcher world. We know where we come from. <laughs> Um, I also I forgot one of the movies that uh, the one that started it all in the very first episode Beauty and the Beast I think that's the biggest reference that you can make uh, from that episode uh, the, is it Beauty and the Beast if they're both beasts <laughs> like you know what I mean well you know he's he's uh, and I forget his name but the hog man um, he's <laughs> the hog <laughs> that's what i call him. uh he's he's isolated away from society the only way he can reverse the curse is love that's beating the beast if i do say so myself that's, that's um, a lot of stories but that's yes te- but that's i mean true. he's physically a beast so technically right you're not wrong. not wrong yeah it's one of those <laughs> you're not wrong but i don't like it <laughs> And he had a line. He had a line. He says, um, I'm being a bore and you must be tired. But it wasn't played off as a joke, but I took it as a joke. He said, I'm not being a I, I'm being a bore. Yeah. Like the animal. Yeah, I got you. No, okay. we got you. you trying to say. No, we're with you. We just didn't trying to look, it, as trying to look up his did. name if I could see no if offense. I could find it. I have to deal with a coworker who does a lot of puns sometimes at me, and I just will just be like, I want to kill you. <laughs> yeah that guy uh playing that character was uh the guy who plays um who's in um game of thrones as thor and um the wildling with like the red hair if you ever seen uh like the you know the Jim oh yeah character. yeah yeah him he played that character oh uh they look nothing alike though that's because you shave. Look- oh yeah beards really do make a difference mm-hmm. um yeah, I love a lot of the acting in this show. Uh, I especially love Henry. I, I, I've said it before. Like Henry Cavill 
for him it very much depends on the character when as far as like if his performance is going to be really good or not and uh a he loves this character he's a huge henry cavill's like a huge nerd <laughs> he is so, he does like miniature shit too like he builds he miniatures miniatures he plays like role play games he plays uh world of warcraft like he's a big nerd um so he loves this stuff and so he you can tell that the love is there and he does a great job playing Geralt. um he has i, I think his voice is a nice mixture between like what's on the page in the book and the voice actor who did Geralt in the video games of being that very stoic and grizzled voice um but he has personality like he does smile he does make jokes he'll laugh from time to time um i liked his relationship with yaskier this time around where it wasn't very combative it was very like like old friend i mean i'm not gonna apologize but we got work to do let's he go. did apologize it was a did half he? ass he apology apologize? he oh, did okay. it was a half ass apology um I will say, and again, Yaskier deserves more. I just, I love Yaskier, and I love that the actor who plays him, uh, Joey Bailey, uh, Beatty. And I did mention this in our expectations video. He does his, that singing is all him, and then he does sing in a small band, or I think it's actually a duo called The Amazing Devil. And they have a few songs that I absolutely love. One is called Farewell Wonder Wonderlust. Uh, which I recommend everybody checking out and drinking song for the social ang- anxious, socially anxious, drinking song for the socially anxious. There we go. That is such a funny song. And it just, there's a part where he's like, Oh, when you lay on a pile of coats and you just wonder what it's like to be a coat. And it's just like, I, I, I connect with that song a lot because I'm like, I always have those weird, like random thoughts just out of nowhere where I'm like, I wonder what it's like to just be one of those red balls outside of target that everybody keeps trying to like bother them or try to roll them away like but they're just yeah but they're just cement they're not actually balls they're like a cement mm-hmm. thing and i have just the most random thoughts like that throughout the day um and so you so, I- so when katie perry says do you ever feel like a plastic bag you're like yeah maybe I, at one point maybe i don't know what kind of plastic bag would I be? I feel like it, you I no, might you'd be, be you'd like be a, one of the yeah you'd be one of them um the the like fancy plastic bags that oh thank you yeah. like from Target I, right. I feel, yeah I'd be a Target plastic bag and I appreciate that mm-hmm. um so he is very talented <laughs> so Freya <laughs> Allen as Siri is <laughs> wait no wait uh, really quick um <laughs> like, <laughs> I do wait the song though I wanted to bring up his singing that's why I, I was trying focus on that his song burn butcher burn i like the music burn, for butcher, this burn. burn butcher burn thank you uh mm-hmm. his singing for or the, his songs for season two were just also i felt so much more not so much more better but like even more catchier than the songs he had in season one it felt like he was allowed to have like sh- a stronger presence with the music at least uh that it was just so good like the jailhouse what is that one called, Joe? Where he's singing when Geralt comes to help him out, you know? And just, I think they were able to give him more liberty because the songs in season two just sound so much like his actual music. I think they were like, hey, toss a coin to your witcher, blew up so big. Just go ahead, go ahead, see what happens. And then burn, butcher, burn, burn. Just, it's on my playlist. I play it all the time. It's just so good. Um, <laughs> But Surrey and you know all the other ones, I guess were okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I think Freya Allen did great. I I think it's so crazy that she's so she's so small because she's twenty years old. I looked up her age. I was like, how old? She's twenty. She's twenty. Oh she's wow! Just so tiny. She's so small. <laughs> oh, she didn't see. Maybe they. Maybe it was the camera angles, but she didn't. She looked like they probably are some in angles, proportion. But I saw one picture Apple of her next to Henry Cavill uh, on the red carpet, like or I guess the premiere carpet or whatever. Now, granted, Henry Cavill is a tall guy. Um, he's a pretty tall dude. Um, but she's even she's even shorter than Jennifer. I'm like, you're just a small girl. <laughs> you're so. But I mean, it works yeah. to her favor. You know, she could play this character who's supposed to be, I think, like. Big like 14. 13 or 14, yeah. Yeah. 
Ben Affleck is 6'4"? I'm sorry. Yeah, Ben Affleck is super tall. Also, I... why are you looking up Ben Affleck? He's not in because there. Henry Cap, I looked up how tall Justice he is. Justice he's, six... he's Yeah, he's 6'1". Oh, well, yeah, eight. Ben Affleck isn't just I... as long with Henry Cavill. <laughs> Recently learned I am one of the shortest people at my office. Yeah, I got to I got to learn that and I was a little <laughs> offended. Didn't realize how short I was until uh there's a coworker. She's five ten. Um, and I guess I had never stood properly next to her until one day and I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, I'm then, five ten, Alex. <laughs> yeah, you're tall. You're you're tall, man. I thought you were taller than five ten. At least I don't know. I the last time I checked my height is when I both was, of you like, are 18, freaking so tall. I, I, the first photo sure we ever standing. took for the podcast, I am standing on a step, <laughs> and I'm still technically just a little bit shorter than you guys. Um, That's true. And I, yeah, like her, I'm sure she had to be put on like apple boxes or something, or to make her even self look smaller during you know next to Henry Carvel to make her look younger. Oh, no, Henry had her was six foot, so <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure she just could just stand in regular. How height tall she is she though? Be. I don't know. Let's see. Um... Uh, but uh, while we're looking f- for people's heights, um, did, <laughs> um, did you guys notice the amount of, um, which I don't mind, but I know some people have an adverse reaction to them, the amount of jump scares, it, which I don't think they would be classified as jump scares in like this context because this is not a horror TV series. But there were a lot of, there were a lot of moments where it's like silence and then boom, something happens. Which I classify as a jump scare. I mean, technically, yes, but uh, they were just so telegraphed that I was not scared at all because I was like, let me, and something's going to pop out in three, two, one. Oh, there it is. (laughs) I didn't see it Yeah, as a jump scare. I was just like, oh, yeah, I saw that kind of coming because they were like setting up for it where they're all like walking creepily being like, oh, wait, we know something's around. So I think uh, I had mentally prepared myself for that. How'd you guys feel about Yennefer's story of just like her not having magic? And then we get to learn more about the elves and get to learn more about Nilfgaard and with all these, like all this magic stuff going on. I felt like the elves were kind of like a weird subplot that wasn't fully necessary. I get why it was necessary for Yennefer, but then they completely dropped the elf story by like the sixth episode, never brought up again. And they're all the end. Not even that much. It felt like that could have been one of those things where people are like, oh, the lore is there. We're not going to explain anything, but it's there. And you're kind of like, okay, yeah, I accept it. Well, because they killed the baby. And then like you later catch up with the elves when in the last episode, they're like, all right, well, we're going like y'all kill our babies. We're killing your babies, which that also that scene was creepy where it's like they go to each house like putting magic symbols you hear all the babies crying and then she like snaps her hands and then it's silent for a little bit and then all these it, screams from all these people i was like that's haunting like that is so scary was like- it was it was it was reminding me of that episode of the walking dead where um where they went in and like in the middle of the night killed all the, those other people in their sleep do you remember that were you guys off the walking dead? They the actually show. killed. Oh, they have like, actually done that Alex quite question. a bit. They actually have done that quite a quite a bit. They've actually slaughtered quite a few people in like the yes. night. Like what yes. jumps to my mind is that episode in the church, where like they waited for everybody to come and then they killed them like immediately. Oh, Are you talking yeah. about the time with like where they went to? They snuck into the other the opposing um, people's camp or whatever in the middle of the night and like stabbed them in their heads. I think I know which episode you're talking about. Like I said, they've actually did that quite a bit. Like they were not the good guys. After a certain point, you're like, you're, there are yeah. no such thing as good guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's only oh, survivors. But, for, but, <laughs> but uh, for I, it reminded me of Prince of Egypt in that scene when like Moses tells Pharaoh, he's like, look, I'm telling you, they are, put the lamb's blood on their door or else God's going to come and start killing babies. And they, he's like, Psh. Screw God. I wish he would. And then God was like, okay. <laughs> Just kill his son. <laughs> you don't know who you're dealing with. Um, I think going back to 
<laughs> when you're talking about Yennefer um, and uh, her like lack of magic and um, that kind of stuff. Because the overarching, one of the also overarching themes, also one of the overarching themes of the season, I feel like to me, was that humans are trash. So, so I mean, they're not wrong. Go on. Right. So I feel like uh, <laughs> getting rid of her magic kind of played into that as well. Um, makes her more human. Uh, and uh, to the Definitely elves and stuff, more, more trash. Than last season. Because last season she was like, it, it showed her uh, vulnerabilities of like last season she had magic which made her feel kind of fulfilled and even then she was still like unhappy and then this season she doesn't even have that and so it just like showed her at her like lowest point um and learning the value of not having like everything you know especially when she's like about to trade siri to like <laughs> to the um, Nilf Guardians to get her magic back, which I do love that Geralt went full dad mode. He's like, I don't care how fine you is. You tried to trade my daughter. We are done. <laughs> we, we ain't yeah, he no didn't more. kill her. He's like, okay, yeah, you can come and teach her. He still accepts her back into like the fortress of the witchers, the keep, and then like well, freaking like, oh yeah. Loves her. I was so Screw that, <laughs> I would have slit her throat. That's because you've never been in love, Alex. All right. There's a look, lot of people. <laughs> look, okay, here's the thing. I do you're not want to love like girls no. been in love. I don't want I don't want children. I think children are gross. However, if you are my child, hell if you are my friend and somebody tries to hurt you or take you that way. I don't give a shit about love. I will fucking cut you down. You do not harm my family. That is my baby. I will go full mama mode and tear you apart with my teeth. <laughs> All right, girl, in my opinion, was weak. That's a weak ass man. He should have taken her down. You threatened my child. I will take you. Awesome. Um, she does need a teacher, and he don't know a lot of mages. Okay, <laughs> he knows. Which, he knows Triss, and he knows Yennefer. And Triss is like not available right now. Triss is dealing with a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, Which Yennefer one? was dealing with a lot. Yeah, but Yennefer is more available. <laughs> <laughs> like he knows he can get Yennefer. All right. It's just like when you're hiring a babysitter, it's like you could probably have your nephew or cousin or whoever come do it. But you know, you don't you can't count on them. You need someone who's actually it's a job to them, you know, and that's and that's who you hire. You don't hire someone who is just a favor. So it's like he like Yennefer, he's like, you owe me. All right, you're gonna do this. Tris doesn't owe me anything, so I can't force her to to teach this child how to use her power. Um, also, back to the Freya Allen thing, it says uh, some fans may be surprised to hear Freya Allen is five foot five as per the actress's IMDb page. Interesting. Yeah, I told you she's small. What's she's short. My height. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, but the, um. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I like, but I like, I, I do like, um, I still like the, the actress who plays uh, Yennefer. I think she does a great job with Yennefer. Um, Which, what are the, chances in the world i don't know how many millions of people are um it, occupying this um uh, these worlds but what are the chances that the one person that you're looking for happens to be with your um happens to be with the person who you're like past love what are the chances that all those stars align into one well, I mean, it's that whole play of like, oh, it's destiny. They're all meant right, to like destiny. be yeah. together and crap. This whole um, show is nothing. Oh, the whole story is series about destiny. <laughs> so kind of all I think up. it's one of those things where it's like, this is a lot of coincidences. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things happening. I feel like that's a lot of like movies and shows that like somebody said something about like, I remember a comment about The Great Gatsby about how like the cousin lives right next to uh, Gatsby, you know, who lives across from the love and all that stuff. It's like, there's a lot of coincidences in an, an American novel. And same with like, all. you know what? I absolutely love all the connections we have now made to Witcher from American novels. To I mean, it. they're all very so, like, all this, at best. They but are, yes. but there's, a, there's an attachment there. <laughs> it's all coincidental. Um, I think 
that's kind of a cop out sometimes when people are like, oh, it's the, you know, it's the destiny, it's fate or blah, blah, blah. And it's like. To be fair, you can't blame American writing on this because the books are written in from Poland. <laughs> this is Polish. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying you, to blame you, it. Asked me, you said American novels I'm like this ain't an American novel I said it's, it's the American it, it's Alex Alex is like it's the American influence on Poland now <laughs> on Polish novels we've ruined Poland <laughs> um, but that's what it is I sometimes feel like Destiny and Fate like are a cop out in books like oh it was all meant to be I'm like but were you traveling that way you don't travel a certain way because like you felt like you had to go you you like she had a you know was trying to go somewhere the what was the city called century uh Sintra. which Sintra, yeah which is also uh, a city on the coast of portugal um that i went to when we went to uh, lisbon i didn't know that was a real city yeah well it's it's uh, probably not it's the same not, city <laughs> no it's not well, yeah, it's i meant richer, i didn't but... know that the name existed with the city <laughs> yeah um and it's it's spelled differently though this centra is spelled with a c i believe and then Mm -hmm. the centra in portugal is spelled with an s i mean i like it because it's it's fan you know if there's one world where i expect destiny and fate to actually matter it's fantasy worlds because everything is there's a prophecy or it's destined or there's a legacy of this that and the third or your bloodline has this type of power in its lineage like that's every fantasy story you've ever read ever is that's part of the part of the bag is that destiny your wizard fate. Harry. yeah like yeah, something you. some type of thing applies to that spe- special person out of everybody else in the entire land that you you sir and or ma'am you're special <laughs> but that's what i think i feel like because uh, i do read a lot of fantasy books that like it's the cop out where it's suddenly like oh this new character who just found out that like, all of a sudden they're like more powerful than all these people have trained and it's like no you, you barely picked up a sword you shouldn't know how to fight that well i did like how they kept that with Suri, Suri where she wasn't automatically good at sword fighting she wasn't automatically powerful you know she was still chaotic she was she still wasn't ray from star yeah. wars yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's your other reference uh they allowed her to like be messy and like too trusting with Jennifer and all the stuff so it was really like I did appreciate that they didn't instantly make her like good and she you know fought against the witcher and somehow she won so like I did I do like that that they were able to keep her still as a developing character she wasn't automatically good because of her destiny or because of her bloodline or because of her magic she was still very um inexperienced there we go so I do appreciate that they did keep that and they didn't you know do the cop of it's destiny it's in her blood of course she's good I like seeing the witchers, like all the witchers, which of course, uh, Vesemir, which is a fan favorite character. So I love seeing Vesemir. Um, but even seeing the other witchers was really cool. Um, and I, lo- I do love their, how they picked the, like them picking on Siri. Um, although Triss's moment, one moment that I remember from this whole show, just being like, you guys are jerks. All right. Have y'all even considered the fact that she's going to have her period at some point? And they're... <laughs> And I love that all of them were just like, look, all we have is dudes here, okay? We've only ever raised boys. We don't know how to do this. <laughs> We've never had girls here. Ex- or at least ones that are teenagers. <laughs> I, they acted, like, they acted like teenagers when they were teasing her sometimes. It's like, are you guys, you, you guys are grown men, you're witchers. And all of a sudden now like they're teasing and it's like, really? I hate to say it, but that is what it is to just be in a room where it's like it's only dudes who've hung out with nothing but dudes. Like that's that's the interaction. The, so medi- the medieval t- the medieval times it hasn't changed since then. It's that, yeah, it's the bro I, I thought that was actually funny because I'm like, man, even back during the days. <laughs> oh like, man, how the witchers are bros. <laughs> They're all bros. They <laughs> They're are. just They're bros. bros. Oh, They're that's bros in the fantasy world. They're the bros of the fantasy world. The, the oh. witchers are total bros. Uh, I, uh, I mean, heck, it even down to this, like the only women we've had here are prostitutes. Okay, <laughs> cut us some slack. <laughs> I'm surprised they could get prostitutes up there because it's witchers. supposed to be, you know, this is supposed to be a hard and arduous like, 
travel they don't really like they have their like medallions and their axles but like i know they go to brothels i'm not like dismissing that i'm just saying how are you going to bring a prostitute yeah, up to the, the snow i get what you mean to go up the mountain that's called the, the path up there is called like the killer or something it's called the killer mountain or something and you know all that way and it's just like a lot of effort i don't think there's enough coin that's that. another that's a character i thought was surprising to see was uh the the prostitute the head like prostitute lady who's like the head of the brothel who showed up in season two where i was like oh yeah you from season one why are you here yeah that was a random thing and she's like oh I didn't, yeah, expect to see her. And I was like, oh, okay. She was trying to get her too. (laughs) What did you guys think of the, like, technical aspects of the show? So not necessarily the story, but, like, the cinematography, the CGI, the sets, the lighting, things like that. Because I I personally um, liked most of it. especially in particular the uh fight scene in what was it episode se- seven i think it's seven eight se- episode seven um because you could actually see it i feel like in most of these fight scenes in these fantasy movies they're dark it's a lot of whiplash they're like hiding but it. this right but this well, one see, like they the actually is, focused didn't watch season one because it was a lot more like, oh, lot. Okay. you want to see some okay. more epic fights from the witcher watch season one they had some great fights in that season too. the first episode's a really good fight yeah the first episode of season one was an epic fight um i i actually like a lot of the technicals here i think well a you could tell they got a bigger budget because they could do more monsters than they did season one um but two also just like they go to so many different places and they all look great like all of the settings they go to look beautiful um both inside and out like even when they're like at like you know dilapidated castles and like dreary villages and stuff that stuff looks good too so overall technical ability is really good and the costumes all the costumes are really cool although i love all the people who (laughs) are who are like Jennifer's just out here teasing us at this point where she has that dress that looks like at any second if she puts her arms up it's just gonna fall off of her the whole time which one she actually wore a few dresses like that when she was in when she finally made it back to the rest of the like um chaos like you know the magic users oh and, yeah and they were in that like bath area or whatever and they're like come in the water and she and I just remember being like like and then like but there's no nudity in season two at all which i was like that's surprising because season one there's a lot of it <laughs> and most of it being yennefer um so that's actually interesting and i'm wondering if maybe she uh signed like a new contract because uh, it reminds me of um uh amelia clark who played um daenerys target daenerys she signed a new contract because if you watch like the first three seasons of game of thrones like she's naked all the time but yeah. then after that, she signed a new contract because she's she was like, I don't want to be naked on screen anymore. It's just not what I want to do for the rest of my career. And so they're like, okay. And well, uh, also when you changed. when you know when when you have more influence, I mean, it's like like it's it's kind of messed up. Like that, like when you have more influence, that's when you get to decide. Okay, I don't want to take my clothes off anymore. Like, but when you don't have power to control it, yeah, right. When you don't have as much influence or power, you're like, okay, I just gotta do what'll get me cast, I guess. Like, get, get, yeah. I will say, I I did tie it into a little bit of her losing her power because when she it, the chaos made her feel powerful, which made her feel attractive because that was a big thing when she was still in that mutated form and her she had a twisted spine and everything. Um. She was very, you know, always tightly wound because she didn't want people seeing her. When she felt had the chaos, when she had the power, she had this energy uh, of sexuality to her, or her sexuality was very strong, and she used that a lot more. Her clothes were, you know, more risque in a way. But in season two, when she doesn't have her chaos, she's wearing a constantly that big purple um, cloak. Mm-hmm. She's hiding more of her form, and I think without her chaos. You know, the new thing may be a contract thing, but it also may be that she's hiding herself a lot more because she doesn't feel powerful. She doesn't have that, what she feels makes her, you know, 
you know, sexy or attractive and that she's just trying to hide more. And it's almost back going back to her original form with her twisted spine and her twisted jaw. And I kind of combated that a little bit to that where she didn't want people to see her physically as much because with her chaos gone, she kind of felt like she was nothing. And it was that lower self-esteem that I did feel tied into that, but it's also probably a a little bit more closer to the contract too. But like- Digging into the deeper meaning. That's, I I mean, Geralt Geralt was quite naked in the season one too. That's true. In season two, he had all his clothes on. (laughs) <laughs> sadly at some points um the only nudity scene we got <laughs> look you, you can talk about Jennifer I'm going to talk about Carol that's fair <laughs> yeah. yeah uh yeah Skier was pretty much the only one shirtless and he, that's he did true. that in that, like season he, seven he showing off the ass he seven. was like he, he was like if Henry Cavill's not going to do it I'm gonna do it <laughs> let me show it take this jacket off and he did it well <laughs> Well, but then again, do you want to be with all your clothes off in those elements and those conditions and that weather? You got to remember, this is the medieval times. They're used to that. <laughs> They're used, true. used to having your clothes uh, off in the cold. Like it's just yeah, like, well, yeah, Yaskier was make, like, it'll make it so easier for us to cuddle there. up, you know? <laughs> well, Yaskier was like, you can have portraits off my nipples. It's so cold. So, I mean, there's the, they, they acknowledge that it's cold. The river's cold. Um <laughs> I mean, if they had to have a character naked, I'm fine with that too. Um, but I think it just says a lot to they were you just not, dangerous for a second. You know, just give me a second. <laughs> Look, I meant what I meant about him being one of my favorite characters in all ways. Uh, it might be that they took a lot of that out because they wanted to focus on Siri and what it was going to mean and how they were going further into this, uh, the stories and the books and things like that. Where it's no longer like, oh, you know, these are sexy characters you're having fun with. All of them are at risk of dying at all points in time now. <laughs> they really don't have time to enjoy each other or bathe or, you know, try to sneak glances. There's a child around who's in constant threat. So that's going to be their main focus now. Of course, there's always going to be those love glances between um, Jennifer and Geralt. But I mean, I think a good chunk of that was that they wanted to focus on the immediate threat and danger that was happening to the young character that they were trying to portray so yeah the mystery in this one was actually really neat of them finding out more about the monsters and where they came from from the obelisk and stuff um i really liked how like all the stories kind of tied together at the end um as we get closer to closing out what do you guys think of the ending a uh, huge plot twist <laughs> um uh, i did not see it coming uh with, and, and will it get and uh now uh, you know finishing season two are you going to watch season three i most definitely am because i have already lo- loved the show and i'm quite a I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of fantasy time period shows i think for me really but i just enjoyed the witcher i do enjoy all these characters and now knowing that they're going to move on from the keep from the witcher's keep and you know go travel more and I kind of like that on the path style where they keep moving and keep going. So um, the wild hunt being introduced, I'm the wild hunt more being in or more presented as an actual like threat now. I'm going to, it's interesting how they're going to try to do that in season three. Are we going to catch more glimpses of them? Is the portals going to be open more? Uh, or how are they going to have it so that it is now more of an immediate threat than they're like they're kind of really far away you know almost in a different land so it's not too much of a threat as to what's occurring right now so mm-hmm. um we'll see how that goes but i will watch season three and i like i said i love season two what about you jonathan since you haven't watched season one even <laughs> hey i watched the official netflix that's recap not of it it's you not the watch same. season one <laughs> Got to watch them sick fights. Got to see uh, Geralt and Yennefer, how they started, how their relationship got started and how it evolved. All right. There's a lot more. You know, I'll think about- jam. All right. I'll, that that I'll, Witcher I'll, jam is, is, is dope. I'll, I'll think about it when I'm deciding to watch Arcane as well. So um, anyway, <laughs> uh, I, um, what was the question? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> next season. <laughs> Well, what do you uh, think about the ending I, and the end? Are you yeah. going to watch next week? I, you know, I like a good twist. Um, I appreciated that 
you know, bringing in some, let's bring in some daddy issues uh, into the, uh, into the plot. Uh, you know, uh, these kind of stories love a good daddy issue. Um, so that was very much appreciated. And um, I'm going to make a bold prediction. Why not? We're on this podcast right now. This is what this podcast is for. Um, I think Siri is going to either in the next season die or become close, clo very close to death. And if she dies, she's going to be brought back to life the next season. I, can I don't want to say anything because I know what happens. happens to Siri, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Did you read the books or did you from the video games? Do you know uh, a little bit of both. Like, I haven't read the books, but a little bit of stuff from the video. Well, they might stray. They might stray. That's true. They won't because oh, okay. Henry Cavill literally like fought to like have stuff in the, as long as he's attached, they're going to, he's going to make sure they follow the books. Like <laughs> they're not going to stray and they want to keep that man happy. That's why there's a lot of lines in this series. Like when Roach died, for example, uh, his horse, um technically roach is not a horse rather a series of horses he just names every horse he gets like roach yeah but they but they all matter to him he loves his horses and um they wanted him to tell like some type of joke or whatever or in the original script and he fought them to have like to use a line from the books that was like something more important and wasn't a joke, but it was a dramatic moment. Cause he's like, no, like the horse, like Roach matters to Geralt. If Roach was to die, he would be very sad. And this is what he would say. Cause this is what it says in the books. And they were like, okay, go ahead. That's what we'll do then. So I, I don't think, I don't see them straying too much from the books as long as he's still attached to the project. And he's half the reason people love this show. So they're not going to get rid of him, I'm sure. Yeah, because I didn't, I didn't recognize. Well, again, I'm not the biggest fantasy watcher, so some of these people might be in other fantasy things. But Henry Cavill was the only person that I recognized. I Actually, recognize. yeah, no, same. I didn't know any other um, character or I actor. Recognize, like the buff, uh, like mage guy with like gray beard who's talking to the owl. He's the only other actor. Where I'm like, I've seen you in other stuff everybody else i have a random no character <laughs> talking to the owl i know you now granted uh i was talking to chandra and al apparently he's like in a very important character so i expect in next season he's gonna be much bigger and have a much bigger role uh because she was like yeah in the books he's like awesome he's like a huge character i so like, okay. don't think it's fair that you have al and chandra as sources <laughs> for this show like, I want to read the books just to have some reference point. I'm not going to play the video games. Um, you don't need to play the games. The games are, like, so just... far removed from the books. They're not They're not even technically canon to the books. Like, they're their own thing. They use the same world, same characters and everything, but they're their own story. Right. That's, In fact, uh, the third one, series an adult. And she never gets to that age in the, in the book. books. Well, like so, I have the books and I have like Wikipedia. So she you does have, die. Like, two... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we believe you, man. That was <laughs> that was so believable. Good job. Um, but yeah, like yeah, Siri is in the third game, and uh, she's not like she is in the books because she's an adult, like out doing doing stuff. So. It's a different, different continuity. I mean, you yeah. can still play the games if you'd like, but they're not uh, really realistically to probably follow this show. You probably only need to read the books to like have reference points because that's no what problem. they're going off of I, anyway. I do want to try to read book, the books just because I've heard the first one isn't great. I hear that one's kind of like a lull, but the other ones are actually really good. It's because the mm. first, I think it's, they say it's the all introduction. One or the first two are just a series. of. It's why season one is that way, where it feels like a series of short stories. And that's what the first two books are. They're like a bunch of stories yeah, I think involving even, Geralt and Yennefer. But I think it's even said stories. like as it's a, I think it's even stated that way in summaries of the book that it's just short stories. Um, yeah, it doesn't become a continuity till I think the third I, one is I, when I, they start becoming an overarching story. Well, that's when they probably intertwine, but I still stand by that. You have like two sources. <laughs> that's like a feels like a cheat. Um, 
I'm excited. Yeah, I love that twist about uh, Siri's dad being the villain <laughs> secretly mm. um, this whole time. And then also uh, the idea that um, that Siri might be bringing the apocalypse, aka the wild hunt. Um, so I, I think that's really cool. And I'm interested to see where that goes going forward with the rest of the series. I'm also curious to see um, Yennefer and Geralt's relationship evolve from here um just because they're now at two different places with not only with each other but also with like their lives like Geralt's very much in dad mode right now like that's 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 all yeah. he cares about like it feels to- like her character's just straight up gonna be a mom mode and it's like oh happy little family we're our own family now blah 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 that thing well that's mm-hmm. the thing I don't know if Yennefer will be down for it because Garrett for Geralt it's like this is my kid essentially like even though I didn't birth her, like you know like my genes didn't make her uh she still is like my kid <laughs> versus maybe that'll, be the, maybe that'll be the conflict versus yennefer it's like i mean I, she's special to you and you're special to me so i'll i'll treat her with respect but like i don't not hold into but maybe that'll like, just like, make her resent leave, her more leave yeah maybe um also, I would love because there's always like in the books, there's implications that Geralt and Triss have had like not they don't they're no, I don't think they get together in the books, but there's all there's implications that they also have feelings for each other. So I'm curious if they're gonna do more with that and play around with that a little bit. Cause I like Triss. I like the actress who plays Triss. Um I've also seen her in other stuff too. I can't think of her name right now. Um but Triss is cool. She's very sweet, she's very kind, she's like the nice Yennefer, you know, she's got magic powers, she's beautiful, but She's not a jerk. <laughs> like she's not out for her, not herself. She's all about helping other people, and that's kind of cool. But she's dealing with a lot. You know, she got burned, and so now she feels kind of ugly. She doesn't want to take her stuff off because she's like, I don't feel pretty. And I'm like, that's an interesting conflict to see because all Yennefer's thing is all about beauty, and Triss is like, to so to see Triss kind of have that conflict of like, I don't feel beautiful, even though it's like you're magical, like you still are powerful and smart like and anna schaefer is her name and she's uh probably other than this she's probably most known from uh harry potter she played Romilda in no, three of the movies i have no idea Don't i have not I've, I've they, not they're, they're the last the... three movies so um yeah i yeah. so i definitely have not seen her in that what am i yeah saying? i, have, I have think i, I saw the first in? harry potter that was about it that's all i got um anyway and thoughts so we would all watch season three maybe jonathan i feel like i'm gonna have to i'm not saying i'm not saying no i'm not saying no it feels like you are a little bit no do do you have grades uh for this season i i'll start yeah, um, yeah. we'll get the we'll get the, the probably the lowest one up the way uh and this is just my personal grade it is not um like an indication of how good the show is it's an indication of how much i enjoyed it uh i'll say a b that's still pretty high minus yeah that's a- <laughs> i'll say b minus <laughs> that's still surprisingly that is, high yeah yeah because i appreciate the art for what it is um I know that it's cultivated uh, a large following and a passionate following, um, one that I am not a part of, sadly, and that's my loss. Um, But I appreciate the fact that obviously they took a lot of time in it. They spent a lot of money on it. Uh, The acting was great. Um, That's something that I always look for. If the acting is bad, then it takes me out of it. like I mentioned, there was a lot of of, of different uh, th- stories and things to pull from that I uh, th- personally um, got from it, uh, like the different movie references, the different TV show references. Um, uh, I was invested in um, like keeping Siri safe. Uh, so by Keep the end- Siri safe. <laughs> Sorry, it just reminded me of uh rick and morty rick and morty episode of keep summer safe i just keep jumping back to heroes where it's like save the girl <laughs> save the world anyway um i think it's save the cheerleader right oh save the cheerleader <laughs> yes, it, yes it is um 
and then by the end, they definitely they definitely get you with that cliffhanger, um, so that you'll want to tune into to season three. So, um, yeah, I'll give it a B minus. What about uh, you, John? I'm never too hard on it unless it's like. I mean, you don't. I, I, I think the only grade you gave pretty low was like Sharknado. <laughs> And even then, wasn't it still like a C? I think you gave like a C minus. Oh, close to a D. Maybe it was really. a D. Yeah. You try, I, to, I you try to defend no, yourself by saying like, oh, no, no, no. if I maybe I'd watch the other ones, I'd be I more. Forget. But like, there's something he gave an F plus, and I was like, that's not a grade. You can't. Do <laughs> I remember that. that. I remember that. I can't remember what it was. We'll find it's it. Not a grade. You can't give anything an F plus. It's still a failure. It's just an F for nothing. It's an F. Um. Uh, anyway, Jerome, what's this your score in for Final me gets uh, uh, an A minus. Um, I like it a lot. This is right up my alley. I'm not, I'm also I'm like a mild fantasy fan. It really depends on the world and the characters for me. If it like gets me invested, it's why it took me so long to watch Game of Thrones. It's why it's been hard for me to like actually take time to watch Harry Potter. Um, still haven't watched The Hobbit. Like, there's so many fantasy things that I'm just like I'm not really invested, so I'm not gonna watch it. Um, should we have sorry to interrupt but, your thoughts should we at one point just do like a Harry because I feel like none of the three of us have like watched Harry Potter like that so I'm going to watch it I just like yeah, I, have I not said I was going to do the series on on the YouTube so be on the lookout for that I'm gonna do that this year and start start actually recording that next month so uh, but anyway continue sorry um but um uh yeah, so I, but this world, I love the this world, the world of The Witcher. It's awesome. Um, I love the creatures. I love the the uh, witchers. In fact, in fact, actually, um, I now want to watch. They have a Netflix movie that's an animated movie um, that ties into uh, The Witcher. It's about Vesemir when he was young. Um, so they released that, I think, earlier last year before season two came out, just to hold people over. Uh, so I, I can't wait to watch that. And then there's also going to be another Witcher show coming out that's supposed to be taking place during um, what I think they call it, what the, the convergence and stuff and like the emergence of magic and, and stuff like that in the Witcher world. And you get to see uh, more Witchers like back in the heyday. It's another prequel series, but it's going to be live action. It's going to have Michelle Yeoh in it. Um, so I'm excited for that as well. And they released a trailer for that. Um, so I'm excited for that too. Uh, I just can't get enough of like Netflix Witcher and it's, it's going really good. Good. So I'm excited. Um, my only reason I give it a minus is because I do think there is a lot of moments in this show that if you are not invested in this world, or if you're not just going to like, kind of just roll with stuff, they just start, start talking about stuff that happened in the past or start bringing up lore. And you're just like, I'm sorry, what? Slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like well i can kind of just like chill out and let it let it be i'm like for the general audience that might turn some people off because they feel like there's this barrier to entry to enjoy this show because they're they there's things they don't know about this world that you're just the show just assumes you should know or assumes you'll just like accept and not question <laughs> so that that's the only reason but other than that though i think all the performances were good I love all the special effects. I hope they keep that up for next season, uh, which I'm sure they will. Um, love the action sequences. Uh, they're always filmed really well. And uh, yeah, and more Yaskier songs because <laughs> the man can sing some, some damn good songs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's my thoughts. Alex. Um, I do, I still do give it like... Um... A B, like a B plus, because they're like what you said about with the lore, and you're supposed to kind of know it and kind of go with it. Uh, I'm actually a really big fan of fantasy books. I love them. I was really, you know, big with Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I really got into that. Haven't gotten into Harry Potter, um, but I've always been a big fantasy person. I've loved that whole like royal and the supernatural aspects of things. So this show is really big part of like all that kind of collected together and I love that hunting aspect that they do when they go down the path and everything like that and of course I love Yaskier um 
And it does remind me of like the D and D stuff I seen, and I had mentioned earlier uh, off off camera that I have a lot of D and D right now TikToks. I'm on like TikTok D and D TikTok. I don't know how, I don't know why, and I don't know how to get out of it. They keep showing up on my for you page. I gotta find a way, but uh, I still enjoy it. Anyway, this show is really good. I think the way sometimes the characters meet up, I think they could have a better explanation than the destiny thing that falls under. Their past could cross a little more organically in a way that doesn't make it seem like it just happened. It's all coincidental for traveling a content and they con- a continent and them explaining how big everything is and how everything takes so long to travel. Suddenly they're just in a new city that's supposed to be like, you know, miles, miles away, able to be there in like a day or two. Everything's always just a couple days, you know, all by horse. That feels really unbelievable, but I get what they're doing. You know, they have to save time and everything like that. Um, they also have a weird time frame that they need to clean up a little bit that I don't think they've thought about well when writing or when doing this um, show because like this all started when the kid before the kid was born you know she's like 14 13 now so that's 13 years and there's just a lot of placement where the time frame doesn't add up to you know when they started traveling at the beginning with Geralt you know with Yen and everything like that it's just there's a wonky time frame that I think needs to either be cleaned up addressed or they need to like do more of a proper like oh yeah this happened during this time and this time um because I know in the books I was told that it's a proper timeline and things are done a lot better um so that is one of the things that had always bothered me they messed that up last season too where it was it like they skipped all over time and it was very unclear when and where you were on the they also forgot to apparently age up Yaskier too because in the first season it's supposed to be a span of actually 10 years a whole decade and he has an age once <laughs> but he's the only human so he should have aged properly um so they yeah like i said they did mess up the time frame and Neutrino. everything maybe you know <laughs> moisturizing does a lot like it's a little true. aloe also helps keep that skin soft you know um mm. So I think the time framing thing was always a big thing for me. But other than that, I really love the show. I love all the characters, you know. Um, I love the way uh, Henry Carvel is just so dedicated to being a big nerd. And it's really appreciated. Because sometimes, you know, with shows like this, and the popularity that they grow, they move further and further away from the books. Same thing happened with Games of Thrones. Game of Thrones and things like that. Well, and that's because they ran out of books. <laughs> they, ran, they did run out of books. <laughs> And once the moment they ran out of books, it seems like they ha- they went off completely off the rails. They went off the rails. They went <laughs> off the rails, and there's just like points where water it's like, bottles and episodes. Yeah, coffee cups, coffee Starbucks, cups. particularly <laughs> Starbucks. They really enjoyed their Starbucks. Um, there's so, a Family Guy. Sorry to go off topic, but there's a Family Guy sketch about that where it's like all these Starbucks cups in the coffee. They're like, hold up, my scene's up, my scene's up. Hold on, watch this. I like going to those where how do people do that though they're like frame by frame I can't I couldn't do that dedication but anyway um I think those are a couple things that like bothered me but other than that um it's such a good show I enjoy fantasy so much I think all the actors whether I like the character so much doesn't isn't really important to like the fact that these actors have done so well, they fit their characters really well. They all present as the person I feel like they're trying to. I never thought like, oh yeah, this character, they kind of picked the wrong actors. This doesn't feel like it. Even down to the witchers are really good. Every witcher they had felt like the character they were portraying because I know a little bit about like Lambert and uh, what's the ginger haired one? Eskel? Eskel? Yeah. I know of those two a little bit and from just what people have told me and those two actors fit very well that character those characters so I was like oh yeah no that they seem like they would be those type of people or that's what they would look like so I did enjoy the acting of it and everything but I think um just the kind of background of it needs to be adjusted a little bit and a little more tight with their time frame so but I recommend it I recommend I definitely recommend this show for people who enjoy fantasy or 
you know, who just want to take a little time out of reality once in a while. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, those are our thoughts on The Witcher season two and a little bit of season one on Netflix. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Comment down below. Have you seen the show? Uh, did you enjoy it? Did you not? What did you like about it? Who's your favorite character? Um, yeah, let us let us know all the deets. Uh, and Jerome and Alex, let us know your deets for getting in contact with you. Well, you can Jerome, you can go Jerome Ray mm-hmm. on Instagram. Uh, you can also follow me on other Instagram pages where things might happen. Um, <laughs> uh, at RoboZoo Media and also things at Jerome happen. the Show. Uh, that's Jerome underscore the underscore show for all my music stuff and stuff like that. Um, a lot of music stuff I'm working on, uh, both in collaboration with other people, but also just uh, my own stuff. So um, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like there's going to be a lot more activity going on, but we'll see. Um, yeah. And then uh, also you can follow us on all our YouTube stuff at the first ones to die on YouTube. Uh, do do that we got all types of uh, you said do like yeah you and Liz god dang it (laughs) (laughs) um there's uh we got all types of extra content that you can't get uh just listening to the podcast on Spotify or or anything like that you know it's uh we got gaming videos uh book reviews mini reviews of just movies that all of us couldn't get to um video game stuff vlog stuff and of course uh video versions of all of our podcasts so you can see what we all look like and whatnot so tune into that to find all that stuff alex you can find me at alex and nobody on uh instagram as well as tiktok where i post little random videos of me and cheddar who's back there sleeping um, and then I also take care of the TikTok account for the first ones to die, where I post little parts of these, you know, podcast episodes we do that you can also, again, find on YouTube. And like I said, I'm currently working on my own fantasy novel. So hopefully you guys will see me, you know, publish something one day, follow in the footsteps of uh, Kieran and Taylor. Yeah, but we shout will out to see. them. Yep. I have their books. I'm hoping to fill up more Same. with our friends works. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I know. I'm going to I'm going to be first in line to buy yours. Mm. Love the support of my friend. Um, what about you, Jonathan? Where can we find you? Yes, you can find me at Jonathan Keys, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you please. Um, I don't post much, but like, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I post on my stories. I try to post on my stories as much as I can. Um, but uh, we are we did. So in November, if you were following my stories, um, the uh, Virtual Monuments hit record live stream that was canceled because Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, he was filming a show and it went over. Um, it was supposed to be done, but we rescheduled it and it's happening uh, next Tuesday. So February 8th, that's when the live stream is officially happening. Um, so that's going to be happening and watch out on my social media for info on that we will also post a link in our own story or we'll put up in our own stories to give you guys all a reminder of that as well and then you can follow us everywhere at the first ones to die on all our social medias also you can email us at the first ones to die at gmail.com uh send us an email you know if you have recommendations questions just want to chat and say hi we're down. We check emails. Uh, and uh, also follow us on just, you know, uh, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Instagram. There we go. Twitter. <laughs> and if you want to hear the audio version, uh, what I like to say is the superior version of this podcast, uh, you can do so on Podbean, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, all the places podcasts can be found. All right, and we'll see you next week for what is the show called? I need to look up. Yeah, the, I know. the, 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 the way we're gonna type it. This is the woman across the whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the woman. Okay, wait. What? What is it called? I need to get the name right. Okay, the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. We're gonna review that. It's on Netflix. Go ahead and watch it, and we'll recap it next 
week. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.